It was one of the darkest days in the history of American democracy. One year ago today, angry protesters stormed the U.S. Capitol and tried to stop the certification of President-elect Joe Biden. Since then, there have been investigations, security enhancements, and even prison time for some of those rioters. Still, America remains deeply divided and at risk for more attacks from within. Caitlin Burke explains. On January 6, 2021, the world saw America's deep division on full display. In the aftermath of the Capitol riot, there was hope that unity would be restored. By many accounts, however, that hasn't been the case. If you look at other incidents, 9-11, uh, school shootings, we've been brought together as Americans. This is the first incident that we aren't, that hasn't happened. Donnell Harvin served as DC's Chief of Homeland Security and Intelligence. That helped him see a dangerous increase in online chatter from armed militias and known radical groups prior to the events of January 6th. His office helping to prepare the local response. I will go to my grave knowing that had it not been for the local authorities, um, that the Capitol would have fallen. While security breakdowns on the federal level remain under investigation, Harvin says it's important that looking back doesn't distract from moving forward. The radical elements that really want to tear apart this country are still there. The responsibility to bring an end to violence and threats of violence against those who serve the public is one that all Americans share. We are all Americans. We must protect each other. Security experts like Harvin worry that our divisive political environment will continue to provide a foothold for those radical elements. The violence that we experienced on January 6th is decentralized and will go back to the states. And we see evidence of that already with uh, election officials being threatened, uh, public health officials being threatened, school officials being threatened. Harvin says this leads him to believe that instead of targeting the nation's capital, the next threat will be directed at the state and local level. Just from a homeland security and intelligence analysis standpoint, if those in individuals and like-minded individuals who sought to stop the, the, the certification of the vote on the very, very last day they could, failed on January 6th. Indications are President that they'll go further the up in the involved. voting cycle and try to stop people from actually casting their votes or stop the votes from being counted and certified at the state level. Looking ahead, Harvin says it's imperative that we protect election officials while securing state houses and voting sites. Ultimately, though, he believes restoring national unity is the most important way to ensure the survival of American democracy. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. Let me emphasize that united we stand and divided we fall. The Bible is quite clear. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Uh, we're losing our stature in the world. Uh, we're losing our unity. And uh, last January 6th, we were in danger of losing our democracy. I remember this uh, playing out over uh, national television and, and just watching in horror as, as it unfolded uh, right before my eyes. And it just drove me into a, a deep prayer. Coming out of that prayer, I had uh, an unusual encounter. This isn't something that normally happens. Uh, there was an eagle at the end of a pier, and I managed to get a photograph of it. And the water, that's not a color corrected. There's no color added. That is the actual photo. Uh, the color is red, white, and blue, and you can see the eagle's feathers a little ruffled on the right side. Um, but it just, what, what I, the message I got is the republic still stands. Uh, we still stand, but we've got to come together. Every other instance recently, whether it was Columbine or 9-11 or the 2008 crash, all of these things, we managed to come together. In fact, they were unifying events in our history. Uh, this past election cycle, everything with the uh, COVID pandemic, um, we're divided over vaccines. We're even divided over whether you should wear a mask or not. Can we leave all of that behind and say, united we stand? Can we pray for unity? 
Can we stop all of the, the rhetoric, the division, uh, trying to divide us on racial grounds, trying to divide us on religious grounds, uh, trying to divide us on economic grounds, and say, we need to stand together because united we will stand, divided we will fall. In other news, the latest surge in Omicron is having a big impact on children. It's also creating a standoff in Chicago public schools. John Jessup has more from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? That's right, Gordon, and really a quickly important words you said on United We Stand. Well, the rise in new cases includes an increase among children. The CDC has now lowered the age for vaccinations as well as boosters. Meanwhile, schools are debating whether to open up classrooms or go back online. Dale Hurd has a story. While Omicron is clearly less dangerous than earlier variants, a nationwide spike in cases is closing some schools and has the CDC urging booster shots for kids as young as 12. Hospitals say the Omicron surge has been different because while more health workers are getting sick, leading to some staff shortages, most patients aren't as sick as those who came in during the last surge. Intensive care units aren't as full, and fewer ventilators are needed. But the rapid spread of Omicron has led Chicago public school leaders to cancel classes for the second straight day, after the teachers' union refused to return to the classroom, citing a lack of testing. If you want to get us back into the schools quicker, um, provide testing. We're trying to be practical for what makes the most sense for our district. The U.S. Education Secretary is insisting that in-person learning is safe. We have better tools now to keep our schools safe, including mitigation strategies that we know work. They work before we had vaccines. The CDC is now recommending not only vaccinations, but boosters for children and teens 12 and older, even though young people are considered at minimal risk from COVID. This comment was from a CDC panel discussion. I think it will allow us to whack a mole for another month or two, but this is not sustainable and it's not smart to think that we have to continue to boost to prevent infection or mildly symptomatic infection. More than a third of 12 to 17 year olds have not gotten their first shot. Meanwhile, a new study suggests that two widely used at-home COVID tests, the Abbott Binax Now and Quidel QuickView, do not detect some Omicron infections. But Israeli officials are touting a new study that claims to show a five-fold jump in antibodies with a fourth Pfizer booster shot, although some researchers said repeat doses of the same vaccine could dampen the body's immune response. Meanwhile, tennis star Novak Djokovic, who has not been vaccinated, was told to leave Australia today following a 10-hour standoff with government officials who rejected his medical exemption, possibly ending his chance to defend his title at the Australian Open. Dale Hurd, CBN News. All right, thank you, Dale. Authorities in Philadelphia are investigating the cause of a tragic fire that left 12 people dead, including eight children. The early morning fire swept through a crowded row house Wednesday. As many as 26 people lived in the three-story building owned by the Philadelphia Housing Authority, firefighters arrived at the scene to find the structure engulfed in heavy smoke and flames. They extinguished the blaze in less than an hour. Sadly, many residents did not get out, relatives praying and grieving at the scene. My sisters and my nephews and my nieces are gone. They are deceased. They are never coming back anymore. Keep all these folks, and especially these children, in your prayers. It's losing so many kids is just devastating. Authorities say at least four smoke detectors in the building did not go off. It was Philadelphia's deadliest residential fire in more than 100 years. Well, another winter storm is headed for the east. A blast of cold air hitting parts of the south last night. Tonight, a storm bringing snow to Tennessee and Virginia, then moving north along I-95, the same highway that was backed up for 27 hours earlier this week. The system expected to dump two to six inches of snow from D.C. to New York and Maine by Friday morning. Well, the stock market took a dip Wednesday on news. The Federal Reserve will soon move to raise interest rates to fight inflation. Just released minutes from the Fed's December meeting show the board might raise rates as soon as March. 
The Fed citing spreading inflation for the move, but also noted that it believes the job market is strong enough to withstand the rate hikes. Well, the Labor Department's newly released numbers show a record quitting spree that uh, that may keep what's called the Great Resignation trending is uh, trending well into 2022. One analyst tells CBN News it's a sign of a healthy economy. CBN's Bertie Park Carter explains. Four and a half million people resigned from their jobs in November, beating the previous record in September. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean these folks are leaving the workforce, but they are hoping for a better job. One analyst tells me this is an indication the workforce is strengthening. Job quits, uh, especially at record highs, are an indication of confidence uh, within the uh, consuming public and in the labor force in particular. Economic advisors like Stephen Skanke believe this resignation rate means people feel secure enough to leave their jobs and find one that fits their needs. There were 6.3 million people who left jobs. Four and a half million, as you point out, actually quit. November also saw 6.7 million new hires. While that's 6% lower than October, it's a positive sign of movement and mobility in the job market. Hospitality and food services, which include many lower paying jobs, got hit the hardest, with 261,000 people leaving their positions. Construction was next with 110,000, and manufacturing jobs lost 66,000 workers. And they're migrating into uh, uh, job opportunities that uh, have better pay, better recognition, less uh, direct exposure with, with customers. Skanky also points out some potential concerns. For example, more than a million working mothers have not returned to work since the start of the pandemic. The U.S. economy is facing record high inflation, and just Monday, the U.S. saw a million cases of COVID reported. Still, Skanky says people leaving their jobs shows a strong heartbeat in the workforce. Quitting your job before you have another one or even quitting your job after you have another one uh, shows uh, a degree of confidence uh, and adventuresomeness, I think is just a hallmark of America. Employers have added 18 and a half million jobs since April of 2020, still almost 4 million shy of what the economy was boasting before the pandemic. I'm Brody Carter, CBN News. A lot of movement in the uh, economy and employment picture, Gordon. A lot of movement in the workforce, but I think the biggest news is the Federal Reserve signaling that they're going to start raising interest rates. Hopefully that will bring inflation uh, and sort of tamp it down, uh, but we're all experiencing it. Uh, gas prices have eased a, a little bit since their peak just a month ago, uh, but we, we need some relief from this inflation. It's, it's going to eat away at all of us. Uh, and there's, there seems to be no avoiding it right now. So if the Federal Reserve can sort of tap on the brake a little bit and, and if the government can stop printing money uh, and funding all these things and making the whole world a wash in dollars, uh, well, then maybe we can come back and, and come back really strong. Well, it started with a prayer walk around a public school and it's gone on to become a worldwide outreach Thanks to the efforts of a single teacher, more than 1,500 public school libraries in 43 states have Bibles. Her nonprofit organization called Bibles in Schools has also extended to six other countries. Mark Martin brings us her extraordinary story. Hi, my name is Hannah Salisbury and I'm an elementary teacher in Virginia in a public school. We first introduced you to Hannah Salisbury in 2019. A public school teacher at the time, Salisbury told CBN News that God put it on her heart to donate Bibles to school libraries. I started to prayer walk around our school, and there was one particular day that I prayed that Jesus' name would be mentioned in the classrooms and hallways of our school. And little did I know that that prayer um, got answered in bigger ways than I could have imagined. Those bigger ways include the nonprofit organization Salisbury began, known as Bibles in Schools. And God really opened my eyes to realize if we have this old Bible in our school, how come we don't have a more engaging Bible that's fun, and that has pictures in it? Fast forward to today to see the ministry's global impact. 
Salisbury says her organization has provided Bibles to more than 1,500 school libraries in 43 states. In addition, Bibles in Schools has reached six countries outside the U.S. There's a pastor in South Africa, and he heard about Bibles in Schools from the 700 Club interview, and he said, I wanted to get started where I live. And he started donating it to a, library, a public library, a preschool, and another school, and he's having requests, just like us. We're, it's been just two years, but librarians are writing us back saying they want more copies because it gets checked out so much. Here is Salisbury's office in her house. She says the need has been so great that she resigned from teaching to work full-time on Bibles and schools. I never pictured going full-time with this. You know, I was just, I was doing this because I saw God moving, I saw him working, and I knew I had to be obedient to what he had called on my life, and he, this is what he wanted me to do, and I could see the need. Brief testimony of how the Lord has used Bibles in schools to impact our lives as a family and the children of God right here in Nairobi, Kenya. Abija and Kenya also learned about the ministry through the 700 Club. Kids in an after-school program needed the Bibles. Most of, actually almost all of them did not have a Bible. And I used to cry to God and wonder, how can I get Bibles to these children? As a stay-at-home mom now for the past five years, I really don't have a source of income yet and I don't know what to do, but I need Bibles for these children. So it became a cry in my heart. She reached out to us and of course my thought was, well, how are we going to get Bibles to Kenya? Uh, but we were able to partner with Bible Society and um, her brother drove three hours to get the Bibles, and we donated 50 engaging Bibles to those students that she teaches in the after-school program. Amazingly, she responded. That gave me such hope, and now the process began, and the rest is history. Thank you for the Bible. God bless you. God bless you. Kids overseas aren't the only ones benefiting from Bibles in schools. My favorite story in the Bible is when Jesus died on the cross for us, and that let me know how God loves us so much. It's easier for us to understand with that Action Bibles because most of the time we can understand the words so the pictures can help us. And they're also spreading the good news. Have you been able to show your Bible to any other kids? Um, yes, I've showed it to my cousins and my friends um, when they come to visit. Plus, they understand the big picture of Salisbury's work. I like how she put Bibles in the library because that's how people know that God is with us all the time and that how kids can read more about God and he, and then that he loves us so much. The Bible is, is a living word and it's active. So just get the Bible in people's hands and God will, God will do his work and work through his word. Mark Martin, CBN News, Midlothian, Virginia. Well, if you've ever wondered what one person can do, let that story inspire you. But when you can get an idea from God, what a great idea. You see all the controversies in our schools today. Well, let's start putting Bibles in that school, and you can put them in the library. Uh, children can check it out, and they can get the Word of God. The Word of God never returns void. It always accomplishes its purpose. So if we can get the, the Bible to children, what a wonderful thing to do. Get a God idea. You can say, you don't have to just rail at the problems today. Say, Lord, what, you want, what do you want me to do? What can I do to help? And let him give you a wonderful idea and then walk it out. And you'll see just amazing things happen, you know, not just here in America, but around the world. If you want more information on Bibles in schools, all you have to do is go to our website, cbnnews.com. After Jenny spent two years in jail, her relatives took her in to help her make a fresh start. How did she repay them? By cooking up meth in their basement and blowing up their house. Jenny was once an honor student, champion athlete, so how did she become a dangerous drug addict? Take a look. I was driven. We have to be the best of the best. Jenny Schumacher had always worked hard to be at the top. 
As a teenager, she was a straight-A student and champion water skier, on her way to college and a career in coaching. To her, there were few things worse than mediocrity and failure. There was a sense of pride, though, for sure. And I never had considered life without a head start. Then in March of 1999, at 17 years old, Jenny was in a violent car accident that left her with multiple broken bones, including her back. True to form, she made a rapid recovery and was soon back to skiing. Something, though, had changed. I was lessened, like my body hurt. I just went from above average to average. It was then Jenny, who had given her life to Jesus as a young child, turned away from God. My wretched attitude was, well, thanks, God. You know, I appreciate you saving my life, but you didn't necessarily do me any favors. So, well, I'm just going to go on with the next thing that I want. And this is when rebellion stirred in my heart. So instead of pursuing college and a coaching career, she married soon after high school and had two sons but raising them aggravated her injuries. Now with severe degenerative arthritis in her spine, the only thing getting her by was pain medication. All I wanted to be was this good mom, and I couldn't even do that. And it just crushed me. I needed help. Before long, she was taking 30 pills a day. I let my injuries tell me you're nothing and you're weak. Her addiction would cost Jenny her marriage and custody of her two young boys. I was just messing up, messing up, failing miserably. Eventually, Jenny's addiction escalated to meth and cocaine. It also led to an arrest and a two-year stint in jail for drug possession and carrying a concealed weapon. Again, she blamed God. I had been praying for change. I was pretty mad at God because he got me arrested. After Jenny was released, a relative eventually took her in. But Jenny used their basement as a makeshift lab to manufacture meth. It was good money, and for a while at least, she was back on top. Everyone wanted to be around me. Everybody wanted what I had. Everybody wanted to house me because I was so important. And it didn't take long before it really destroyed my life and the lives of her relatives. One day while making meth, there was an explosion. Instead of calling 911, Jenny fled, and the house burned down. I destroyed what they loved and what they had worked hard for, and I had violated their trust. It was like, you know, time stood still. I could just feel relationships tearing and betrayal. I was so ashamed, and I ran. Then, after hiding out for a week, Jenny woke up in a hospital recovering from a near-lethal overdose. Charged and found guilty of arson and manufacturing meth, she was given a 15-year split sentence, three years in and three years out, with parole for good behavior. I was starting to go, OK, maybe I don't have the answers. So I asked God, to help me, to be with me. After months of prayer, reading scripture, and accepting God's love and forgiveness, Jenny recommitted her life to Jesus Christ. I felt his love, and I really realized he never left me. Even in the fire, he was there. Even in the hospital, it was me who turned my back. From that moment forward, I began to devote every moment I could to reading the scriptures from front to back. And I said, God, refine me, reshape me. Lord Jesus, show me, teach me whatever you need to do. And I began to be made whole. While in prison, God also healed her of addiction. She was released for good behavior after serving only three years of her 15-year sentence. I walked in to Julia Tutwiler Penitentiary for Women, ashamed, torn, lost, discouraged. When I left there, I had hope. I didn't necessarily know exactly where I was going, but I knew I had the Lord on my side. I knew I was unworthy, but he made me worthy through what he had done on the cross for me. In the coming years, Jenny married Caleb, 
a U.S. Army chaplain, and began taking strides to mend the relationships with her family. Today, she's a public speaker and author. He repaired my heart. He restored my soul. And it didn't matter if I was disabled. It didn't matter if I had scars, because he could mend them. He is the Redeemer. He is the Healer. He is the Almighty. With Him, all things are possible. With Him, all things are possible. You see it in Jenny's eyes. You see the light. You see the joy. You see the life that she has. Maybe your story is not like Jenny's, but maybe you've had some things that happened to you, and in your heart you started blaming God, and, and you started saying, well, why did, why did this happen? For Jenny, it was, a, it was an accident, and, and she was miraculously saved, but at the same time left with lingering injuries. And so she let that get into her heart, and then you heard her clearly. That became a root of rebellion. Uh, it's these offenses that we have, that God, why didn't you do this, or why didn't you do that, or you're not running the universe right today, um, you're, you're, not, you're not doing what I, what I think you ought to do. And in that, she then used that as an excuse to say, well, if that's the way it is, well, I'm going to go off and live life my way. And you see how far it got her. For you, have you let that, have you let that offense come in where you so suddenly now think, well, I know what I'm doing and I know how, how to do this and I'm going to do it my way. I'm not going to do it God's way. When she finally came to herself and realized what was happening and how she was her own worst enemy, when she turned it around and now has the life and that joy you saw, she now has that. She, she's now saying, well, with, when I know God's got me, when I know that God has my back, when I know that he's with me, when I know these things, I have all the confidence that I need to overcome whatever obstacle life will throw at me. Wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't you like to have the assurance that God is with you? that he's guarding you, he's watching over you, and he'll see you through any difficulty. Now, difficulties will come. Jesus promised that. He said, in this world, in this life, you will have tribulation. You will have problems. Bad things will happen to you. But then he says, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Now, when you look to him and you look to his overcoming power, then whatever you face in life, you too can overcome. That's why he's saying, be of good cheer. Now, you can have this. How do you get it? Well, pray the same prayer that Jenny prayed. She prayed an all-in prayer. Lord, refine me. Reshape me. Whatever you need to do, I want you to do. That's an all-in prayer. Now, for some of you, this is brand new. You've never heard this, that God actually will walk through life with you and enable you to overcome whatever obstacles come your way. For some of you, you heard this long ago, and just like Jenny, you were a Christian when you were a child, but then... Life happened, and you turned away, and you walked your own way. For some of you, you're, you're saying you're a Christian, but there's secret things in your life that you know aren't pleasing to God. They're not pleasing to you, and you just can't seem to let them go. Well, I've got news for all of you. Today can be your day where you can get rid of all of that. You can have a fresh start, a new beginning a new way of living, where you have the righteousness, the peace, and the joy that God wants to give you. You can be an overcomer with him. You can have him watching for you, being with you, encouraging you, showing you the way forward. How do you get this? Do the same thing Jenny did. 
You ask for it. You pray for it. So let's do that right now. Let's pray the same prayer that she prayed. And let God do for you what he did for Jenny. He wants to. Get that. He wants to. He died for you. He wants it so badly for you that he gave up everything so that you could be with him for all eternity. Let's pray. Let's believe. And God will do all the rest. Pray with me. Jesus. Say his name. Say it out loud. Jesus, I come to you. And Lord, I pray that same prayer. Can you refine me? Can you reshape me? Can you regenerate me from my innermost being? Can you give me righteousness? Can you give me peace? Can you bring me joy? And can you forgive me for all the things that I've done wrong? All the times I walked away, all the times I turned from you. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Make me new again. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Father, for those who just prayed, I ask for a baptism in your love. I ask that you fill them to overflowing with your joy and your peace and your forgiveness. Be with them now, for we ask it in Jesus' name. <clears throat> amen and amen. If you prayed with me, there's one more thing I want you to do. The Bible says that when you believe in your heart and then you confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. What I want you to do is do that. Confess. I just prayed. I just asked God to come into my heart. I asked him to forgive me. It's easy to do, 1-800-700-7000. Now, when you call, I've got a free packet for you. It's called A New Day, and there's a CD teaching on how to live the Christian life. There's also a booklet. You can get it as a download, an MP3 file. You can, it's all free. There's no financial obligation, none whatsoever. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. Welcome back to Washington for this CBN News Break. Coronavirus and the economy, those are two of the biggest issues facing the Biden administration. And according to new polling, two of the main reasons the president's disapproval has reached a record high. The CNBC Change Research Survey shows 56% of voters don't approve of the way Mr. Biden's performing in the Oval Office. The economy, one of the driving forces of that high number, 60% say they disapprove of the administration's economic policy and 55% disagree with how the pandemic is being handled. Well, writing a historic wrong in Louisiana, Governor John Bell Edwards posthumously pardoned Homer Plessy, a black man arrested for boarding a whites-only train in an effort to abolish Jim Crow laws. Plessy died in 1925, but his descendants were on hand for Wednesday's ceremony. Plessy's case led to a Supreme Court ruling that established 50 years of laws upholding the doctrine of separate but equal facilities, which discriminated against black people. In 1954, the court ruled in Brown versus Board of Education that the concept of separate but equal is unconstitutional. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. No soap no toilet paper, and no money to feed her family. That's what Jessica was facing after the pandemic shut down her job. Nothing hurt this single mom as much as seeing her children go hungry. So how did she and her family survive? Thanks to people like you. Jessica is a single mom. She'd been able to provide for her two children until the COVID pandemic hit Mexico. Without income, she wondered how long they could last. I started crying and I told my children, I do not know how we will buy food to eat. I was really scared. Then the family's food supply nearly ran out. All we had left were a few beans. We had no soap or toilet paper. We had nothing. How is it possible that I could not feed my children? Eight-year-old Mateo described what being hungry felt like to him. 
but after a while, it hurts right here. Nothing in my life has hurt me as much as not having any food to give to my children. Jessica prayed and asked God for help. And I opened the Bible to Isaiah 54. There, God says, I am your provider. I am father to your children. At that moment, I remembered my grandmother used to prepare and sell donuts. So Jessica borrowed $5 to buy some flour, oil, and sugar. I started making just a few donuts. I sold them all in half an hour. I could only make a few because I didn't have the right tools and ingredients. Then CBN's Orphan's Promise learned about Jessica and her children. We bought a new, larger frying pan, more ingredients, including a large sack of flour and a rack with trays. All that made it possible for Jessica to make more donuts faster. As a result, her income has increased even during the pandemic. I feel happy because when I see the donuts, I know we will sell them all in one day. And now that they have new protective gear, also provided by Orphan's Promise, they said they feel safer as they sell. Thank you for allowing God to use you to bless my family. 700 Club members, when you see these stories, I hope you feel the blessing that comes from knowing you've touched the lives of literally thousands and thousands of people. Jessica is one. This is one family. But the sun never goes down, as Pat used to say, on the work of 700 Club and the people who support that. We want to say thank you. To those of you who haven't joined the 700 Club, what an opportunity you have to touch lives in an incredible way. Imagine this single mom, nowhere to turn, nobody to help, children to feed. What was she to do? And then you came along and made a difference. And so if you haven't been a member of the 700 Club today, you have an opportunity to join with thousands of people who are touching the world every day. 65 cents a day, $20 a month makes you a 700 Club member. Would you go to your phone and call now and just say, I want to join? When you do that, if you do it using Pledge Express, that's electronic monthly giving. It means you don't even have to think about it. I love it. The bank does all the work. You don't have to have stamps or envelopes on hand. And it means that consistently you are reaching out and touching people in need. And if you're using Pledge Express today, our way of saying thank you is to send you Power for Life teachings. You'll get one of these every month. And we loved being able to send to you teachings that will be a blessing to you. So 1-800-700-7000 is the number to call. You just say, I want to join the 700 Club and I want to do it using Pledge Express. And if you have a particular heart for children and families, you can designate your giving to Orphan's Promise. We are CBN's outreach to children and families in need, and we say thank you in advance. But call now. You really can make a difference. Gordon? You belong on another planet. Well, that's what the doctor told Elizabeth Woods after he discovered she was allergic to almost everything. This went on for 10 years. So how was Elizabeth finally cured in an instant? Well, see for yourself. Elizabeth Woods had had enough of the hives covering her body and the itching that came with them. So in 2007, she had a full spectrum of allergy tests done. She wasn't prepared for what they found. The first thing that came out of his mouth was, you, you belonged in another planet. He had like four pages of allergies that includes everything primarily around me, the outside, the indoors, dust, pests, animals. Even worse for Elizabeth was the long list of food allergies. The other things she could manage. Completely changing her diet was another story. It took so long for me to grocery shop usually at least two hours reading the labels. And, I mean, it was a very strenuous test. It became really depressing. Elizabeth had to start carrying Benadryl and an EpiPen for emergencies. Dining out also became a tedious task to avoid trigger foods like dairy, soy, or nuts. I really have to study the menu. I would have to talk to the waitress. Sometimes I would call beforehand and ask for the ingredients of this and ingredients of that. 
For over 10 years, Elizabeth prayed for relief. I get tired of not being able to enjoy life, not being able to eat. And I would use the scripture where God said, I give you life and life more abundantly. And I was praying, God, I want that life more abundantly. I want to be able to eat something and not to be worried. I want to be able to be like everybody else. In 2020, Elizabeth started watching The 700 Club on a regular basis, recording the episodes and watching them after work. I mostly enjoy the prayer part. I'm praying for that person with cancer. I'm praying for that person with the broken bone. I mean, I, <laughs> I am praying, you know, right alone, like, oh, Lord, yes, Lord, heal them, Jesus. He really ministered to me. Little did she know that on April 6th, 2021, it would be her day for prayer. And I turned it on to watch April the 6th, and I heard God say, watch March 31st. When the time came for prayer. Yes, yeah, someone else, you have severe food allergies. I mean, you've, it, it just keeps getting worse and worse. You can hardly eat anything. God's healing that for you right now. Your whole system is being put in order, and you're going to be able to enjoy foods you haven't eaten for years. I was just like, oh, my God, that is me. I get so excited. I'm like, oh, God, oh, God. And I, I was blown away. I mean, God would think of me and remember me right then and I needed him to do that and I knew you know that he was going to heal me from my food allergy right after Elizabeth decided to do a little test since two big problem foods were dairy and peanuts she went out and bought some ice cream bars with nuts one of her favorite treats she hadn't enjoyed for years I ate it slowly and there was no reaction None whatsoever. I started thanking God. I, you know, I called on my friends, like, oh my goodness, you won't believe what had happened to me, <laughs> you know? And I was just so happy and so excited. Today, Elizabeth is still enjoying the freedom to eat wherever and whatever she wants. I'm just really encouraged because I know he took care of my food allergy and he got everything else under control too. You can know that he's with you. You can have the assurance that he's come, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. These are promises for God, from God to you. And if you're in him, then all the promises of God are yes and amen. That is an incredible thing. You can, you can have these promises come true in your life, you can pray for them to be revealed and to be fulfilled because God watches over his word to perform it. Now, what is he looking for? He always looks for faith. The eyes of the Lord go to and fro over the whole earth to show himself strong to those whose hearts are loyal to him. And here you have Elizabeth, she's crying out, and she's saying, Jesus, I know you came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, I'm in bondage to this allergy. I can't live. And please give me an answer. Please come. And he saw that. He saw the request. He saw the faith. And he provided for her need. He will do that for you if you just follow the same thing. It's a wonderful prayer, the prayer of blind Bartimaeus. Jesus, son of David, he recognized the Messiah. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus will do that. He wants to do that. That's why he came. Now, we're going to pray. Before we pray, we've got some other miracles for you. Here's Rebecca from Virginia who says, I had an ongoing irritation in my ears, caused great pain, itching from water buildup in the inner ear. After seeing a specialist, she was giving hearing aids. Rebecca was also suffering serious depression. Well, some weeks ago, Terry had a word of someone needing healing for their ears. Rebecca believed the word was completely healed. Listen to this. She no longer needed hearing aids and She's been delivered from depression. God came, Jesus came, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. What do you have? 
Well, this is Rosa. She lives in Georgia. She started suffering with tremendous pain on her left side around her rib cage. Although x-rays were done, nothing was found. While watching the 700 Club last December, Rosa heard you, Gordon, say, there is someone suffering with terrible back pain. It's like a dagger going from your spine all the way into your shoulder blade. On your left side in the back, just as I said it, the pain just left. You are healed. The miracle is astounding. God's healed you, and he has set you free from all of that pain now. By faith, Rosa believed God for her complete healing. The pain left and it has not returned. Praise the Lord. Rosa believed God. You can believe God. Here's the promise for you. He forgives all your iniquities mm -hmm. and he heals all your diseases. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you. We come to you as eager children, knowing that you have the answer, that you have the answer to our need. Stretch forth your hand to do signs, wonders, miracles. Heal your children, Lord God. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. There's someone you've had a blow to the back of the right side of your neck, and it's like everything is, is curved now, and it's very difficult for you to move your neck, and there's pain that radiates from your right ear all the way to your right shoulder. God is able, and he is healing that right now. He's restoring your neck, restoring all, all the vertebrae, all the, all the nerves, all the muscles. Everything is being restored now in Jesus' name. Do what you couldn't do before and receive the healing that Jesus is bringing to you right now. Tara? Yeah, there's someone else. I have no idea what your condition is, but you'll know this is you <clears throat> in your diagnosis, the discussion about tannin. I don't, I'm not sure what that is, but you're being healed right now from whatever condition you're suffering from. And then someone else, you have a pinched nerve. Oh, it has you in constant pain. You've listened to these testimonies today and you've said, oh God, why not me? Well, today it's you. Jesus is healing that pinched nerve and the pain is gone now in his name. Uh, there's someone you've got an allergic reaction to tea. Uh, I don't know what that is, but uh, you know what that is. And, and God is healing that. There's a constriction that comes in your uh, throat from it. And God is, is healing you of that. You don't have to live in fear of it anymore. In Jesus' name, be healed and be made whole. If you've been touched, let us know. Let us share in your good report. I'll we'll leave you these words from Luke chapter 5. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Walk today in his power. Uh, know that he's with you, that he wants to provide for you. He wants to protect you. He wants to be your all in all. God bless. We'll see you again.